Oh yeah, oh dear, I was just on my way to today's photography location and I think there might be a little bit of a problem, a little bit of a problem with the van, the Blue Jade is um, sort of like a bluey grey smoke coming out of the exhaust. I don't know if it might be burning oil or something because I could smell it as well, but yeah, where I was going to head to was a, a bit of a drive in the Lake District, so I'm going to stick local, hope the van's all right for this adventure at least. Fingers crossed we get on okay. Oh my gosh, man. <laughs> So I honestly don't really know what happened with the van there. I stopped on that lay-by for a little bit, tried to have a quick look at the exhaust and thought, well, I can't do anything about it, let's move on. And then the smoke stopped. There was no smoke coming out the exhaust, but I thought, I'll stick local anyway. I don't want to risk anything. But yeah, I mean, it is what it is. It's life, these things happen. And yeah, I, uh, this is an area that is pretty local to me to be honest and I have wanted to explore it for a while and I think when these things happen sometimes it can be a good thing can't it? it's almost like it's fate but no I'll, I'll spin these around it's really wooded I think this particular section actually looks quite messy to be honest but I think this will be a really nice place to come back to in springtime so at the very very least I suppose I could see it as I don't know a little bit of a scouting session so as you probably could notice, I'm shooting with, I suppose a bit of a strange setup in all honesty today. I've got a normal backpack on, just an old North Face one that's it's got my jacket in and a bit of water and a few other bits and bobs, nothing to do with any photography stuff. And then I've recently purchased, just with my own money, this new hip pack, which I'll get into in this video. I'm really, really liking it so far. This is the first time I'm properly bringing it out on a, in, on a photography shoot in saying that. But, a lot of you may remember before Christmas, I was shooting with a different hip pack from a brand called Apidura, and it was brilliant, it was great, it did the job. But to be honest with you, it wasn't quite right. There was something that was definitely quite a big oversight from my part. And if I'm honest with you, I think I made a bit of a mistake in recommending that hip pack to use. So yeah, it's probably going to be a bit of a chatty video today, ladies and gents, hope you don't mind. <laughs> I think some of you like the chat, don't you? But yeah, anyway, that previous hip pack was from a brand called Apidura and it was great and it was very waterproof, but therein sort of lies the problem. And this is the oversight I had, you know, you'd, you'd have the hip pack and it'd be nailing it down. So you'd get your camera out and it'd be nice and dry and you'd take a few shots, but then of course your camera would go back into that hip pack wet and all the water would drip off it. And because it wasn't made for cameras, it was just a plastic bag. All of that water that was coming off your camera would then pool at the bottom of the bag, like at the bottom of the pack. So, I mean, it just, it just didn't work. You know, normally you put your wet camera into your camera bag and it's not ideal. It's never ideal when it's wet, but it's like plush. There's like, cloth and material that I guess sort of soaks up all of that water which is what this hip pack has got by the way you know so yeah that was the oversight it was almost too good in its waterproofing capabilities and I mean I don't, I don't really know what I expected to happen of course it's waterproof so the water can't go out from the other side but then not come in through the outside you know what I mean like so yeah um a little bit annoying, but hopefully I've rectified it with this pack. And I want to talk about this pack that, by the way, I've bought with my own money. This isn't sponsored by them or anything like that. I'm just after trying a new setup, I suppose, really. And um, yeah, I'll talk about this in a bit because happy to admit it is a bit strange. Oh man, this is awful. This is. This is terrible, there's no path, the Ordnance Survey map's just lying to me. Or well, there's an old path through all of these. Look at it, it's just so messy. <sighs> really nice views out that way, but I mean, in here, it's not looking good. Oh, oh, by the way, I forgot to say, let me show you this. In this hip pack today, we have got a little goodie. 
we've got the OM system back, or the Olympus whatever, the OM5. He is back in action, so same lens as well, the 12 to 200, so that's all I've got today. And um, yeah, I'm really happy to have it back actually. It's, um, it feels really fresh again, like when I was leaving the house it felt like I was leaving somewhere, I was forgetting somewhere, obviously no tripod or anything like that today. And I've, yeah, I've, I've definitely missed shooting with this kind of, you know, like really real like minimalist setup. And yeah, good to have him back. If only there was something to photograph though. Oh man, look at the state of this. There's no path or anything. I'm just kind of oh, walking up all over these dead ferns and just trying to make, oh, trying to make my way up. Oh, oh the side of this little hill here. Oh, this is madness. I, I was looking at this on the OS maps and oh, I've kind of looked at this spot before and I was just thinking, whew, yeah, this will just make for a nice little pleasant walk one day. Far from it, man. Anyway, the views are actually starting to get a little bit nicer. Look at that, it's wonderful. Back towards Whitbarrow there and I think, right off in the distance behind him, I think it's the Yorkshire Dales. They're snow topped, it looks fantastic, as are some of the fells back into the lakes as well. Probably can't see them, but we should get sight of them soon. Uh, at least there's that. <laughs> this is brutal. <sighs> oh, so we've made it out of all the horrible trees. And look, this is what I had in mind. Some beautiful views back into the lakes. You can maybe see all the snowy fells back there. And I mean, we've still got a little bit higher to go on this hill. But yeah, I'm gonna, well, I've just been grabbing a few shots. I'll, I'll just pop yous down there a sec. Show you right off in the distance there, we can actually see um, Ingleborough. And it looks really cool. It looks almost like, uh, it's, a, it's a bit, a, a little bit Mount Fuji-esque, you know, the sort of uh, pyramid shape and like symmetrical. It looks ace, but there's a big sort of sheer cliff or like a quarry in front of him. And yeah, obviously just with the OM5, 12 to 200 lens on, obviously I can get so far in. And it looks really cool because there's some light hitting those cliffs and Ingleborough is snow topped, really symmetrical, like I said, but there's so much mood and drama in the clouds. And same back in that direction as well. You can probably see, look, there's just splashes of light on some of them snowy fells as well. So yeah, a couple of shots, pretty much as soon as we've got out of all them trees. So by the way, as for this setup that I've got today, I thought I should explain what it is I'm testing this for, what I want it for really. And it's for kind of big hikes, particularly big hikes, potential like multi-day hiking, wild camping, things like that. The main thing with the hip pack, same as that kind of waterproof one that I was on about, is just accessibility. I want to be able to get my camera out like this straight away. I'm a photographer, I want it to be accessible in these beautiful places. and. You know yourselves, if you've got a big massive backpack that's got wild camping gear in it, you know, food, drinks, clothes, all sorts of different stuff. Like, it's just a nightmare if you think, oh, there's a photograph over there. You've got to get the big backpack, you know, it's just no good. Whereas the hip packs, you know, seems to be a really good way around that for me. So I'd never really come out with such a tiny little bag. But I think I like the idea of having my photography gear separate from the, the day bag, you know, everything that I just mentioned. Um, as for this pack, I wanted to reiterate again, I don't care if you buy it, I'm not sponsored by them. I just I just think it's a really, really good idea and I'll show you a couple of things that I like about it. So yeah, I suppose I'll put a link to this in the video description below if anyone wants to go and find it, if anyone's even bothered, but yeah, it's a Evoc Hip Pack Capture 7, you can perhaps see there, <laughs> that is the brand and the model or whatever. But yeah, like I said, it's a proper camera bag. So I've got a few bits and bobs in there, just my OM5. And then this here is actually just like my videoing stuff. So like the pocket screen that's filming me now, microphone and spare battery and that. So that's quite chunky. So you could, look, you could probably get like another lens in there or something, maybe another couple of lenses. And yeah, and then it's kind of got this little compartment at the front. I probably feel like I'm selling it or something, but I guess I'm more selling the idea of the excitement for me of like going out on hikes and having my camera gear accessible. Now that's all well and good, but what was still so important to me with a hip pack like this was it, it needed to be waterproof in some sort of way or else 
what if it starts raining? I can't just let it get wet. I don't want to put it into my backpack. That defeats the purpose of it. And I can't, I don't know how this pack passed me by actually, but I only found it quite recently. It's got, look, like a rain cover at the bottom. It's even got like a little bit to hold your tripod there if you wanted to take one out. But yeah, this, this just seems to be perfect for me because this comes out obviously, covers it over if it starts raining. But, you know, critically your camera is still accessible even with the rain cover on and I just think that is brilliant so yeah this this one makes a lot of sense to me like I said it's a good little test today and I'll spin these around here actually um, I'm loving this kind of fell top that we're on here I mean look at all of the features the rocks the crags the trees and everything um, so yeah I'm gonna continue wandering around I'll get my hip pack back on and see if we can find anything else Before we move on too much actually, I'd like to stop and say a massive thank you to today's video sponsor Skylum who have got this fantastic app that you may have heard of called Luminar Neo. We'll actually jump back to my office to do this one. So yeah, a really big thank you to Skylum for letting me play around with Luminar Neo. I think a lot of you are going to like this app if you've not heard of it. Now Luminar Neo, I should say, is a photo editing app. but what I think sets it apart is its use of artificial intelligence. It offers quick and effortless results in a lot of the time, just like one click. And it can be a massive time saver when it comes to editing your photograph. This is a great app for beginners, by the way, people that are perhaps just getting into post-processing. For example, let's look at this raw file here I have opened up in Luminar Neo of an image I took recently in the Lake District we can actually go straight over to the presets panel here on the right hand side. And I'm gonna try the overcast preset as, well, it seems to suit this image pretty well. And I'm gonna go with the dynamic result option here at the top. And then you can use this little slider here to basically dial in how powerful you want this, um, you want this preset to be. I think this is pretty incredible, you know, considering there's just been one click of a button madness now you may have also noticed the horrendous amount of dust spots in this image this raw file so let me show you what i think is a quality feature of luminar neo this is actually one of my favorites even though it's quite simple you can click on the edit tab here at the top of the app we can head down to the essentials section click on erase remove dust spots and all of them are gone in an instant that is brilliant so there's all kinds of tools that you're probably used to seeing in an image editor as well. You know, we've got an exposure slider here. We've got shadows, highlights, saturation, etc., etc. So, you know, importantly, here, you can still have full control over your edits. It's not all about automation here. But then there's things like Sky AI. This is madness. Um, I like using this for some of my thumbnails here on YouTube, actually. So we'll take this thumbnail here, for example, and... Sky AI will automatically detect where the sky is in your shot. It'll do all of the heavy lifting for you, all of the masking for you and everything. All you've got to do really is select the sky that you want. Again, pretty much all in just one click. It is fantastic. Notice how the Sky AI tool as well will actually change the lighting of the snow and the trees that are sort of behind me here in order to make it look more realistic. There are loads more creative AI based tools as well that will sort of analyze your photograph, like everything in your photograph and do as much work as possible for you. So look at the atmosphere AI here and how it can add a fog effect to your photograph. And then the depth slider can change how far into your scene the fog starts and finishes. Again, with very little effort on your part. Um, or in this photograph, look at how the relight AI can change the brightness of only the deepest part of the image and then sort of even how we can change the warmth of that deepest section. There's even a lot of kind of fun features to play around with too. Take for instance this Sunrays tab here which allows you to incorporate literally a whole new light source into your image. This perhaps may cater more to, I don't know, imaginative compositions rather than the sort of authentic photography that I typically pursue. So I'm really glad actually that Skylum got in touch because this is a fantastic app it seems and I'm going to use a lot of these features that I've mentioned going forward and all in all 
I think the main thing is it just seems to be a fantastic way of getting post-processing done quickly at, at a high level. You know, there doesn't seem to be much compromise here. It's brilliant. So um, I have a link below if you want to go and check Luminar Neo out and make sure you use the offer code Henry at checkout, which will get you 10% off. So like I was saying before, I just love all of the features up on this felt top here. And I'm trying my best at the minute to work with this kind of section of rocks here. There's a couple of, well, lines, like strips of rock almost that are leading us out into those snowy Lakeland fells. And we've got a lovely mid ground as the land undulates. And yeah, it looks really cool. So yeah, just messing around a little bit. I think it's gonna be in a portrait orientation, almost certainly. And yeah, the main thing that I'm just trying to be careful with with the composition is just not to, you know, cut these rocks off in the foreground, make sure there's nice gaps on the right and left. There's even a nice tree, this one here. I don't know, it's just helping to give the image a nice little zigzag as we make our way back to the, the fells. And, and the clouds are incredible as well, really, really full of texture, you know. So yeah, just in aperture priority, focusing down at the bottom. And there we go. Yeah, I think that's going to be a nice one. <laughs> So just quickly, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you are, um, please consider subscribing, hit the thumbs up button if you could spare me a quick second. That would be, yeah, I'd be very grateful. That does actually really help me out, believe it or not. And it's free, you know, same as subscribing, don't cost you anything. And of course, please comment down below and here, use, use hit packs if you found any good ones, you know. Um, yeah, what sort of setup do you have for hiking? I love all this sort of stuff. I'm not mad into gear, but, I think when I can see that there's a problem, there's a little bit of a gap in my gear, if that makes sense, then yeah, I can go down a little bit of a rabbit hole, I suppose. Um, right, I'm gonna move on. I'll, sh I'll show you this, this fell, this little hill or fell, whatever it is, really cool. Look, just new things getting revealed every now and again. I tell you what, I have to say this, it's, whoa, it's lovely <laughs> to be out in these sorts of conditions, you know? Um, it's still, it's fairly mild as it goes for this time of year. I think it's about 11 or 12 degrees. It's nice and ah, oh, just stunning views. This is what, this is what I thought this uh, hill was gonna be like. Nice and pleasant. Oh, wow. Look how mint that looks. Oh, back down towards sort of Arnside here and then Arnside not this little mound here and then off into Morecambe Bay. Fantastic, man, absolutely class. So I'm just trying to show you that it's really reflecty. It looks terrible. Sorry, the lines all over the screen, but just if we keep heading up in the direction that we're going, uh, it looks like there's a little tarn there. Is it called Tom Tarn? Um, so yeah, that's something to go and explore. Oh, there's our little tarn, look. Here is our, you know what, it's cool, isn't it? Just when you pick a random hill or a random location and you don't know what to expect other than really what you might have driven past a few times and what you can see on Ordnance Survey maps and it's just really childlike. I mean, I'm all for the Wainwrights. That's what I was gonna do to say, that's what I was meant to do. But I mean, um, yeah, sometimes it's nice to have that kind of spontaneous approach, isn't it, where, just don't really know what's going on. Oh, there's a little footpath marker there, look. A little footpath marker, just there. Yeah, yeah that's a nice little town. <laughs> Perhaps not worth getting the camera out for, but I'm determined to do a little bit of a loop back to the van rather than go down that frigging hill through that horrible dense woodland again. <laughs> oh, I, got, I actually, I got seduced by those way marker things you know them fence posts because there was a few and a few and it looked like a path that was bringing us back down the hill and as it turns out this was the path that i should have come up which is brilliant so far i mean it, it always looks like it's going to disappear but i love this sort of thing because i mean it's quiet i haven't seen anybody all day and if this path leads all the way back down to the van then that's good because that means i know exactly where to come next time but yeah looking at it I mean, look, this is the sort of dense wooded area that I was in before, 
where I was saying that the OS maps were lying when they weren't. It's just old Henry here couldn't find the path properly. In fairness to myself, it's a mad old spot like. It's just so dense, look, fallen trees and everything, it's carnage, but oh, it's nice, it's nice. And look at the views, man. If this feels like such a random little adventure, but oh, look at that, clouds are lovely as well. That is just fantastic. I mean, imagine if there was a massive dump of snow or something and it was tricky to drive round and I could just come up here and get all of these views close to home, that'd be ace. All right, onwards with this just random little adventure like. So there we go, we are back, back to the van. Oh, we'll see if it emits any blue smoke on the way home. But yeah, that was a, that was a, like I said, a random little adventure, wasn't it? I'll tell you what, I enjoyed it though. That kind of like carefree, spontaneous approach, like I said, that was, that was really cool. I always think, you know, that I should do more of these sorts of oh, like little local trips like that, where I don't know what to expect. You know, sometimes I go to the Wainwrights in all honesty because I'm pretty much guaranteeing myself good photographs. I know that's not always the case, but at the very least you're, you're heightening your chances rather than picking somewhere random locally that you haven't been that's gonna be absolute hit or miss, do you know what I mean? And I think what it comes down to, to be even more honest with you really is, you know, this is a photography channel and I, I get anxious about coming out on a f photo shoot with you lot, bringing these along and then potentially taking no photographs, but I mean, I've spoken about this now and again, and at the end of the day, from the responses that I always get from users, like, you don't care, you know, you don't care if I don't get any photographs, and I need to, oh, I need to keep telling myself that, because I love these little trips, you know, not feeling like I always have to go out on big, massive hikes. Anyway, the hit pack thing, that was definitely a success as well, I think I could say, from, from the sort of plan that I had of wanting to just see how it felt, see how it fits, see how it was practically, and I think, yeah, I can safely say that I'll definitely have a little go at that when I next do a big hike, perhaps wild camping or yeah, multi-day. Anyway, thank you all so much for tuning in. Please do comment down below about everything that I've spoken about, about, you know, the hip pack and, you know, these sorts of little local adventures. Always love to hear from you, love to have a chat. I read every single comment, by the way. I just, I, I feel like I've never got time to reply to all of them. I try to reply to as many as I can, but I appreciate every single one. So thank you. I'm going to go home, see what happens with the van. I'll see you on the next adventure. Out.